So here we are, 2023, the first proper uh, Pam the Van. We are jaunting off, broadly speaking, southwest with a view to going somewhere near Stonehenge, somewhere near Devizes, and somewhere vaguely over in that direction. We do have a planned stop for the night. It will be a wild camp, obviously. It's Pam the Van after all. Um, not sure how he's going to find it. It's a bit of a bit of an unknown track. I'm Sid the Swans over there. A uh, bit of an unknown track. Uh, it's just described on the map. Uh, somewhat peculiarly, it doesn't have a road name or indeed a road number but uh, we'll see if we can find it and come along for the ride, we'll let you know what we find Well this is one of my amazing I bet you can't see me's but up there is the moon and we have got an absolutely crystal clear sky. I have absolutely no idea if you see that on this. I will take a couple of still shots to put onto that. But we are in a lay-by just off the 303 at Stonehenge. Well, good morning. Here we are, up with the lark, assuming the lark gets up at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning. And we are in this fabulous uh, lay-by track, call it what you will, just off the 303 at Stonehenge here. Really, really nice peaceful night. Uh, we're enough away from the traffic for it not to be an issue. Cracking good stars, got some photos, I'll put those up for you. And this particular track uh, has got some kind of name, I can't remember it is. Some weird effort, it's not actually got a road number. And uh, we came there, we found two or three others, uh, went a little bit further to where we are now, found one other parked up there, and then we went for a bit of a stroll and we're going to stroll in a bit, and there must be another 15 or 20 campers of assorted sizes down here. So we're going to have a look around. Apparently there is a footpath that gets you a little closer to Stonehenge without paying the dreaded EH, uh, and just so you know roughly where we are, um, Stonehenge is... Um, over there somewhere. Let's go find it. Now we rate ourselves as pretty responsible wild campers and it does infuriate us a lot. Infuri infuriate us a lot when you see stuff like this. There's nothing gruesome to see here but you get the idea. I mean come on if you come out you know you're staying out like A don't burn seven shades out the grass and B at least remember to bring a bag to tidy up after yourself. I mean this is what gets wild campers a bad name. But, uh, hey, what, there's me for a wind, eh? So, rotating this direction and hopefully having a look upwards, you should see over to your right that Stonehenge already has a lot of people who presumably have booked and paid to go and see some stones. We've had a wander down this path very nice path it is too and we found this lovely footpath and despite the fact that what that sign says down there there's absolutely nothing to stop you walking along this footpath which is exactly what we're doing look at that we've got some uh, some sunlight beams coming through here and a second look at the good old OS map you can literally walk right beside So unless you actually want to go and like, you know, look closely at the stones, so I don't think actually that's touched them. You can get here, no problem. Let me zoom in a bit. Yay! Happy days. We have a bit of a plan. We are going to go to Cane Hill Flight uh, on the canal there, go and the big flight of locks. Maybe stop there for a bite to eat for lunch. Uh, pop across to Kenneth Long Barrow and um, see what else we find. And the hope is to get back here tonight because there's loads of space. And if it's anything like a clear sky as it was last night, I'm rather hoping to get the decent uh, sky panorama, whatever you want to call it, sky, whatever, uh, dark sky stuff, uh, over the top of Stonehenge. Let's see if the day goes according to what used to be a plan. Here we are at Silbury Hill. Never really been here before. It's one of the sort of complex parts, if you like, of the area. So we'll have a look around there. Up there, the World Heritage Centre. Sorry about all it. Don't know much about it. But we 
we are going to be going over there. And unfortunately, that uh, fence you may be just about to see in the distance is as far as you can get. It's very damp down there, it must be said. It's almost like someone's done my ground. And this is as far as you get. That is very damp over there. It always amazes me. Nonetheless, impressed me how nature doesn't give up. There's a real busy main road here, there are snowdrops, hundreds of them, just self seeding and doing their own thing in the wind. Just climbed up the hill to Kennet Long Barrow. Quite a popular little place. I have no idea if we're in, but I have bought a torch on the tripod. Looks like we found our way in. It wasn't difficult to be there, just walk around the corner and there it was. I have no idea. Well, it's going to be dark. I'm not expecting there to be lights inside. But if we uh, clamber around here without doing ourselves any nasty injuries. The road's light. So, that's quite easy to get in here. Not a problem at all. We'll have a a wobble in. I didn't notice the first time I came in here that the roof has been at some point reinforced, um, repaired, reinforced, could it want to. So if I get this all the way up, you can actually see there it's uh, it's been repaired with concrete. And you know what, to be fair, I think sometimes that, that just needs to be done and uh, at least we can still get in and have a look. But nonetheless, pretty impressive place. We've got a chamber off to our right over here. If I go around this way for you. Uh, camera's not doing a bad job of picking this up to be fair uh, but we've got a, a chamber through there to our right if I get the torch in there and we've got a chamber over here to our left if I swing around this way come around here we have a chamber over there and if we go back over this way to the centre down there where we are inside. The torch is uh, doing quite a good job, but the camera is not doing too bad in its own right. Let's if I can make that a slightly wider focus. There we go, that's a bit better. So, and if we look up, you should be able to see. Oh, hey, look at that. So, I guess that's a bit of extra ventilation. It's quite a thick slab of concrete, that. That's one, two, three. That's probably about a foot thick of concrete. However, the fact is, because it's been repaired, or we can be in here, I'd love to know where some of these other chambers go. There's obviously a bit that goes through here somewhere. I'm not entirely sure about that. And indeed, off to each side. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate the light's not the best in here. But we've only come in here probably uh, about six or seven metres, uh, about 25 foot-ish. Uh, there's lots of little offerings up here I've noticed. There's quite a few people who put stones and things. If I pick some up for you. So it is a bit dark, so the camera's having a bit of a struggle. Uh, there's all kinds of little things people have put up here. Little offerings, I guess. Uh, there's a, a coin up the top there. A few other bits and pieces. So it's quite interesting to see. It's still effectively used. I just confused it. Cool. Let's... Uh, Meander our way out then into the daylight. Filming this from inside the van because it's a bit windy out there. 
and I've not got the dead cat with me. But there's Silver Hill, and allegedly you're not climbing up it. But I can see from here, and you may be able to see, certainly two and possibly three very distinct pathways. So is it a lot of very enthusiastic sheep, none of which I can see now, or a lot of people are being bad boys and girls? We're looking at the informative post here that tells us, or panel, that tells us that, uh, according to best theory, where the blue concrete stones are now, there would have been stones, and where the red smaller circular ones are, would have been wooden posts. A uh, bit of a reconstruction down there. Have a look around it. It's a bit windy here, so I'll probably uh, go and walk about and then drop the audio on later. A little bit windy out. Uh, not the best of lighting conditions. I have just spent a happy half hour, I hope. Time will tell. Photographing Orion's belt uh, over Stonehenge. Uh, tried all sorts of fancy tricks. A bit of, bit of torchlight illumination, a bit of long exposure, a bit of all sorts of messing about. So I'm going to get back to the van now. It's uh, about eight-ish, half eight, something like that. Cloud I went with it, it's just starting to cloud over. But I did want to get the conjunction uh, of the two planets and the moon, uh, but I screwed that because it went cloudy in my day. So back to the van, bacon butties await. Actually, I think it's hot cross buns. Anyhow, something awaits me. I'm gonna go and do a bit of uh, chimping, see what I got, and hopefully it was something good. If not, I shall cry. I always find it amazing to see the different sorts of vehicles down here, or well, anywhere we go basically. There's a little guy in a Peugeot van there, he's got night heat, it's uh, probably a 200 watt solar panel on the roof. A little bit of a web bath stove running away there, because we're trying to use knock off at 90 quid and why not. And then the other side of it, we've got people with extra long wheel bases. Uh, one to the left there, he's got, looking at the size of that, 400 watts of solar on the roof. Um, and then you go a bit further down, there's a good old converted VW. So the visitor centre car park uh, is about a mile, a mile and a half away from the circle. So they actually bring down coaches. There's at least two, because I saw two of them yesterday. I'm not sure how many there are. Uh, and then the coach just does a, a bit of whirly-whirly around here. That takes them back. So my hope is to get in between coach trips. That's the hope. What we're going to do Warmble on through this rather lovely gate here, get a face full of sunshine. The path is a little bit worn out here, so put a bit of a deviation in for us. And as we approach, there's a few sort of, uh, I don't know, stumps on the floor, call it what you will. Um, and they've got on them what they believe these things used to be. And this one says, Missiolithic tree throw okay so they've made a sort of quite nice patchwork block I suppose if you like something is what they think used to be there what that's based on I don't know but if we move a little further on the path we come across to a couple of these and these tell us that these used to be Mesolithic post holes so a bit of an interpretation going on for you there's two or three of those along here. Anyhow, onwards. Um, we just follow this path along. So we're walking pretty much directly into sunshine at the moment. Cracking good morning for it. And the hope is we time this between bus trips. Well, I've walked along the path, um, a little bit past the stone per se, if you wish, but I've come to the sun side of them. And the reason I've done that is to show you this arrow on the floor. Uh, it's a double, double-ended arrow. I'm just going to rotate. Uh, so forgive me, I'll stop flipping the camera, and I will show you what I mean. Now, because I was too tight to pay to get in. I had to wait for people to get out of my way. Alternatively, set the camera on a tripod 
and take a couple of photographs and merge them all together. Now in this one you can see over here is lovely and clear. And over here we've got a bird and we've got some peeps and some camper bands, none of which are ours. The other image I took, we've gained a photographer and a bird who, like me, didn't pay to get in. But over here is clear other than the camper vans, and we'll deal with those later on. So back to our first image. We're going to put one of these on top of the other. So if I hold my mouse button down, I can drag this image here on top of the new one. Hold down Shift, let go first, then let go. And we now have two images absolutely slap on top of the other. The difference being where the bits we don't want are. So we're going to apply a layer mask to this. And all a layer mask does, it tells us which bits we want to keep and which bits we want to get rid of. So I'm going to apply a layer mask there. And that's our mask. So remember that the bit we want of this image is this bit. Uh, no photographer, no birdies. And the bits we want of the other image is this bit. No people. And all we need to do is make sure we've got our layer mask on. We select a paintbrush. We make sure our paintbrush is set to black. And we can change the size of our cursor by pressing the right square arrow. And what happens now is when I rub over this, it's going to rub out bits that are on the top layer. And if I set that to 100%, it'll do it instantly for me. And what you to see now is what was below and there you go just by photoshop magic we have got rid of all the problems we're now going to flatten that layer down so we'll go layer flatten the image and as far as photoshop goes that is now one single image i am going to do a bit of sneaky cheating around here to fix these bits here so we'll zoom in a little bit using our plus key. And I'm going to be a little bit sneaky here and use a masking tool. So I'm going to quickly select, as that thing says, quick select around here. And I'm going to inverse that. And now what we do is we use our clone tool, which sits over here. And we can move across a little bit. And I'm just going to choose somewhere that looks about right that I can replace this with. So if I now hold down my Alt key and click, this will now copy whatever was over there to what is over here. That's the plan. So we select that where we want it to be, close as heck. And now... It's copying from what you can see on the right to what is over on the left. Rather like that. We take a bit of sky as we go along as well. Okay. Now if we move across here, we have a similar problem with these other bits of vehicles. But before I go too mad, I don't want everything here. I want to get rid of this sign as well. So I want this to be the original 6,000 by 4,000, which is that. And I want to lose this sign, and I don't mind losing some of what's over on the left-hand side, and I don't mind losing what's over on the right-hand side. So before I do a lot of work getting rid of vehicles, maybe if I just do something like that, and maybe stretch a little way that way, that will do most of the work for me. Just a very edge, a bit like that. And the only thing I have to worry about now, if I get full screen again, is this sign down here and a little bit there. Now I'm going to use a cheat tool here. And there's the spot healing brush. And although it's called the spot healing brush, let's zoom in a little. You can actually use it to heal lines and blobs. So if I make this a little bigger and I just draw across here, this is going to try and work out what to replace this with based on what's near it. Like that. If I do the same over here, 
it will have a rough guess at what it thinks ought to be there and given this is the random grassy field you get something like that and that is nearly it i've just got this little bit of van over here to sort out so we'll go and zoom into our van and using the same trick we used earlier on with our little clone tool we're just going to choose a bit here and it's a relatively random bush pattern up there so if i now put that post on top of that post we should find that i can get rid of that vehicle without too much grief and i suppose if i was really worried i could argue about the missing bits of fence down there but you know what i really can't be worried and that is how we get an image without people birdies or camper vans in it Here we go then, walking back up to Bacon Butty Land. It's quite a long walk from where we parked. You can get possibly much closer to where I am now, but uh, we're a bit fussy about the ground at the moment, but it's uh, level us out. Yeah, it's a really quite pleasant walk. But up in front of me is a really lovely sight. That lovely sight is Pam the Van and the roof fence open, which means cooking is taking place. A fabulous bacon butty time, why not? And that's what you need after a morning stroll.